Today's Saab 9.3 tutorial is Saab B207 PCV valve replacement. I'll also give you a quick indication of the causes of Saab B207 PCV valve problems and some bad PCV valve symptoms you might expect to see. What does a PCV valve do and what causes PCV valve problems? Put simply, the PCV valve regulates the flow of gases from the crankcase back into the combustion process where they can be burned. In most cars, problems with the PCV valve are caused by the valves becoming sludged up, which in turn is caused by short journeys and extended oil changes. What happens if a PCV valve is bad varies from engine to engine, but typically a poor idle and poor drivability result, but most noticeably oil leaks or the engine burning oil. Oil leaks can be especially bad on forced induction engines such as this Saab turbo. I could write an encyclopedia about that so let's car park the whys and wherefores and dive into how to replace the PCV valve on a Saab B207 engine. Where is the Saab B207 PCV valve location I hear you ask? It's only a small device and it lives inside the inlet manifold so first task is B207 inlet manifold removal. It's not necessary to remove the injectors or the injector rail in order to get the inlet manifold off for this job. It just so happens I'm in the process of servicing my injectors and, and fitting a, a rebuild kit. But it's not exactly inconvenient because it does actually help me to be able to see down here and helps you to be able to see from the camera what's going on down here as well. Start by removing the uh, intake hose to the throttle body and put the hose to one side. If you've still got the fuel rail in place, disconnect the little pipe to the end of the fuel pressure re regulator. Now we need to remove the throttle body. Start by removing this bracket, for which you'll need a 10 millimeter socket on an extension. And with your flat screwdriver, prise back that leg so that you can disconnect this valve and the bracket. Now with your 10 millimeter deep socket, loosen and remove the two studs and the two screws that hold the throttle body into place. Not forgetting to disconnect the harness from the throttle body. The two studs go in the lower positions. Once undone, be careful that your throttle body doesn't just slide down and fall off, but it should lift away easily. Uh, a precaution with the throttle body, I did do a short video on the precautions you'll need to take when uh, putting it back and tightening the clip around the hose. Watch that video if you haven't already seen it, I'll link to it in the description. Disconnect the harness from this valve and the harness from the map sensor. Disconnect the two large connectors from the engine ECU. If you've never done this before or it's a long time since it was last disconnected, I have already shown you how to do it and I'll link to a clip for that down in the description. Loosen and remove the four screws that hold the ECU in position making sure not to forget that under this top right screw here, there's an earth connection. Recover the screws and lift away the ECU. With a pair of grips or pliers, undo the clip that holds this hose to its inlet manifold spigot and pull the hose off the spigot. I have done this before and I found it helpful to disconnect this valve by pushing on this little blue connector and putting it out of the way. But you don't have to do that. In a similar fashion, coming in from this direction, get your left thumb or strong finger behind the connection for the brake booster, press in the tab and pull it off the spigot. Then just below here, there's a screw that holds the dipstick into position. Undo that with a 10 millimeter socket, a quarter drive socket on a quarter drive ratchet. Makes life a lot easier there because it is somewhat fiddly. Once it's loose, it's easier to do it all the way by hand. Doing it by hand also makes it easier to recover the screw. Don't go losing it in the depths. The eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed a connector just down there next to that screw. It is actually clipped to the uh, little bracket on the dipstick tube. So leave the dipstick tube where it is. Undo the three nuts on studs that hold this harness bracket into place. I found that a 10 millimeter ratchet spanner was ideal. Once you've removed those three nuts, you'll have to use a little jiggery pokery and just release the bracket from the studs. There's no magic formula for it, but I found doing this top one first easiest. All we're looking to do is get a little bit of movement and also obviously free that stud. Although it's not necessary to remove the injectors and the fuel rail, you will need to disconnect the injector connections and bring it forwards here because this harness comes through this cavity in the, in the manifold. 
To release the connectors from the injectors, you will need to press this tab down here and pull the connector off the injector. It might be an idea to get in there with a pair of long fine nose pliers to do that. A cautionary note here at this point, you will need a 10 millimeter socket on an extension, but the socket must be either a 3 8 or quarter inch drive socket because a half inch drive socket will not fit through this hole in the manifold here to reach the screw that's behind there. I would suggest a 3 8 drive because you get a longer handle with the 3 8 drive and that allows you to get a bit more torque onto the uh, screws. And with your 10 millimeter socket, loosen, remove and recover the four lower screws and one upper central screw holding the manifold to the head. Once you've got this screw in here undone, you can reach behind and get one finger on it so that you can withdraw your socket without it coming out and falling down into the depths of the engine. But then I find a magnetic pickup absolutely ideal for pulling it away. And similarly, when it comes to putting the manifold back on, you'll find a magnetic pickup is a good idea for putting it into place before tightening it down. The magnetic pickup also makes life a lot easier for getting these two screws here. I particularly like this magnetic pickup because it's got a light in the middle, which, you can, which is very useful in dark spaces, but also it's very strong. I'll put links to some tools and equipment in the description. The manifold is now left connected to the head only by these two studs. Undo the nuts off the two studs with your 10 millimeter socket on an extension. The way I deal with uh, nuts like this on studs that are in uh, awkward positions and where uh, they could easily drop into the depths is to undo them until you hear the threads click over, put it back on half a turn and then with my magnetic pickup connect to this nut and undo it with the magnetic pickup. So as to make sure to not damage the injector harness, I suggest pushing it back through the manifold here to prevent snagging it up. Once you've loosened the nuts on these two studs, the only thing now left holding the uh, manifold in place is a screw holding the manifold to a bracket that also connects down to the engine block. And to get that screw undone, you'll need, yes, you guessed it, a 13 millimeter socket or spanner. The only hex head on this job that's not a 10 millimeter. <laughs> it's best done by feel to get it undone. And it's the only one that's really, really awkward. But once you've got it loose, it should come out by hand quite easily. And you can finally remove the two nuts on these studs and you should now be able to withdraw the manifold away from the head and if you lift it and bring it away to the to the left as you look at it here it is one removed manifold if once you've got the throttle body off from the manifold you can look down into the manifold and in the bottom see a pool of oily mess if it's not much don't worry about it but if there's a fair bit probably the easiest way to clean it out that i've found is to spray in some uh, carb cleaner or perhaps some meths or other suitable solvent cleaner and then use a turkey baster to get it out and then dry up the last of it with a big ball of cloth on the end of a long screwdriver or stick. With the manifold on the bench, turn it upside down and this is where you'll find the PCV valve. It's a push fit in there and so you need to extract it. There's probably a proper tool for doing this but what I've done in the past is used a pair of long nose pliers as you saw then, that's not easy to get out. I poked one end of my pliers in and literally just grabbed it out. And there you go, there's the old one out. The way these valves work is that inside here, just behind the holes that you can see when looking down there, is a little rubberized plastic flap, which is flexible because it's rubberized. That allows gases to flow that way when there's vacuum in the manifold and pressure in the crankcase which will be approximately atmospheric. But as soon as there's any boost in the manifold from the turbo, the flap closes against the holes and prevents boost leak into the crankcase. And even if your valve is relatively clean, like this one that I'm taking out, they can fail because the little flexible plastic flap is of course subject to all the combustion gases and unburnt fuel 
and such like that can come through the valve and over time those chemicals rot the plastic and it can split which then means that boost can leak into your crankcase so for that reason even if your engine's in excellent condition and is relatively clean inside and even if you can see that this is not clogged up then you should replace this at uh, a regular interval anyway i would suggest around every 50,000 miles to replace the valve put a little spray lube or silicon grease around the o-ring because you should never put an o-ring in dry make sure that the hole that it's going to go into is clean and free from any debris and simply push fit the new one into place i know all that effort getting the manifold off and then of course putting it back on again afterwards just to pull out a plastic valve and replace it with a push fit new one hey ho that's the way it goes if your pcv valve was sludged up find the hole that's adjacent to the valve when fitted and with a stout piece of plastic i'm using a uh, tie wrap have a poke around in the hole and make sure that it's free on the inside if you're getting any sludge coming out on it or you can feel any a buildup of sludge behind the hole or even inside the hole try and clean it you could even spray a bit of uh, carb cleaner or brake cleaner in there to try and shift it but ultimately you will need to take off your cam cover to give it a clean inside although you could consider a engine flush in the first instance perhaps uh, two or three successive engine flushes would, would be called for unless you're planning to take it apart again in the near future get yourself new gaskets for the inlet manifold and the throttle body maybe also take the opportunity to give the throttle body a clean whilst you've got it off but otherwise it's now just a matter of putting it back together the opposite way to the way it came apart and hopefully your engine will run a lot better as a result job job